All right, all right, folks. Let's take a quick look at those markets today. We got Bitcoin hanging out at 17,491. It was actually just at uh, 17,500 like five minutes ago. That seems to be a little bit of a resistance point right now for Bitcoin. It uh, doesn't want to go too much higher than that 17,500. I think we'll get there. You know, I made a video last week and I said, I think Bitcoin might go up to 18,000. And I basically got that from Gareth Soloway because um, he was talking about that like a month ago thinking that we might see some short-term bullishness for Bitcoin, maybe like an $18,000 Bitcoin, then we'll dump from there. Um, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Um, you know, these altcoins did get a pretty good pump, but you are seeing a little bit of a retracement. You know, Cardano was back down to like 30 cents uh, this morning. So, you know, definitely taking a little bit of a breather. <clears throat> You got BNB down a little bit. Matic's still going crazy. Litecoin's been kind of hanging out that $80 mark for a while. Uh, Solana's down almost 5% today, which, guys, you're as a trading coin for Solana, I think I highly recommend it. I, I'm not doing it, but you can probably do very, very well because there's a lot of venture capitalists who are going to want to pump and dump Solana probably for the next year. Um, but I just, just tread very carefully. Tread carefully. Uh, we got, you know, AVAX up a little bit today. Cardano pretty much where it was yesterday. A little down a little bit. Let's see where old Theta is. And Theta's still at 80 cents. So Theta's been, Theta's been at 80 cents for really the last couple of days now. All right, so let's see what's going on. Not too much, but there are some interesting stories. We have stocks up today. Talked a little bit about Coinbase yesterday. Coinbase ripped it. I mean, Coinbase ripped it the last couple of days. I actually <laughs> sold a little bit of my Coinbase yesterday, hoping to buy back in a little bit lower. But I, and I hope, I'm actually now hoping for a Coinbase dump um, back down to like $35, uh, dollars, but we might not get it. But if we don't, I'm going to take that money and just buy more Cardano. But like I said, folks, I think Coinbase is where people are going to be flocking to in the bull run. Um, primarily starting the middle of 2023, going into 2024, then probably 2025, you'll see Coinbase at like blowing past its all time high. I mean, I just, I have no doubt in my mind unless something crazy happens. <laughs> A little bit of Cardano news. Cardano price is recovering after hovering from 25 cents for over a month. The Cardano native token has fired up with a nearly 30% price surge since the advent of the new year. The hype around Cardano's upcoming stablecoin DGED launch could be among the factors pushing Cardano's price forward. The news of Hoskinson's new health facility that would accept ADA has payments as payments might have also contributed. Yeah, that's weird news about that a hospital that accepts Cardano. I don't know. I mean, that's just kind of their payment processor. We've seen this before. I think that's kind of bullshit news. I mean, it's good to see, but I'm sure that same hospital is taking, you know, Bitcoin, Litecoin, everything else. So I think it's probably, I think Cardano just hit a low and decided to pump. You do have this DJ uh, stablecoin launch, which is interesting. I don't think too many people really care about it, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think Cardano just, you know, was hanging out 25 cents for a while. It was a little low and Bitcoin went up a little bit. And, you know, once some of these altcoins get to those lows, it doesn't take much to shoot them up. And I think that's what we're seeing with Cardano. So I still think Cardano has more room to go. I mean, what you might see right now, this is all speculation. Bitcoin's going to have its day maybe for the next week. <clears throat> might get up to like 17,800, 17,900. And then you'll see the altcoins start to basically go on their second leg. And then you might see Bitcoin hit 18,000 and have a massive dump right back down to 17,000. This is all speculation. I don't see Bitcoin going over $18,000 right now. Now that's just me, could be wrong. Bitcoin could be $25,000 next week for all I know. But going off all the people who I respect, I think $18,000 is going to be a really strong resistance. And we're seeing right now seventeen five is strong resistance. But I could see us blowing past that. It also depends on the inflation news and the jobs numbers and all that coming out tomorrow. There's a Fed meeting, I believe, tomorrow. There's something going on tomorrow. So if that's reasonable, we might see that bush from, um, push the Bitcoin up to 18000 I'd like to see Cardano get back up to $0.40. Cents. I mean, that would be really, really great if it did. But that might be more towards the second half of 2023. But again, folks, it's all speculation. I'm just I'm just a guy guessing like everybody else, but I'm educated. Like a lot of people on YouTube are just 
are guessing, like, they're literally pulling shit out of their ass. Well, not literally shit. They're pulling these price numbers. I'm basically... I'm basically getting my um, my numbers off of people I respect, like Gareth Soloway, a little bit of Tone Vase, Willie Wu. Um, who else? I mean, there's a there's a bunch of other. Who's the other one I've been listening? Oh, uh, Richard Hart. So you know, there those guys are all smarter than me, and I basically take whatever they say and I kind of crunch it together, and then I come out with my numbers and just common sense as well. So we'll see what happens. Did a story about Theta last week, as I always talk about Theta. I made another news article as a top metaverse coin. It made number. three. Four, uh, launched in 2017, Theta Network was designed to be a solution to issues with video streaming platforms such as YouTube, Netflix, Prime, and Twitch. It works as a computer network that creates strategies and in providing incentives for its users, for its platform, market expansion. Theta serves as a native token and is, is in charge of all its operations. Like any other metaverse platform, Theta Network aims to reduce costs, transfer power from companies to the masses, and remove intermediaries, which give a bigger price of the pie to content creators. Like I said, folks, if you look at the top metaverse coins, Theta is always, is really always like in the top three, maybe top five. It's been like this for a while. You know, metaverse took a really big hit, which I knew was going to happen. I just didn't know exactly when. Um, a lot of metaverse projects I was in, they dropped like 99%. MetaHero, I can't even name, I had like a bunch on KuCoin. Um, and I only kept a few of them. Um, of course, you know, Theta is a metaverse coin, but it's also so much more than that. It's VR and it's decentralized. I mean, there's so much going on with Theta. So, but it is lumped in with metaverse. And, and you know, I, that's my, that's actually one of my major holdings right now of Theta. My other one is Vulcan Forge. I might buy some other ones. Um, but I sold a lot of my, my shitty metaverse coins and I just rolled that over into Hex because I think Richard Hart is going to pump the crap out of Hex um, going into the next bull market, especially when that pulse chain comes out. <clears throat> but Theta is a top contender. If you go on their Twitter, constant updates. You know, I mean, I've, I've said it all about Theta, but it always makes a top metaverse, um, a top metaverse project. So if you want to invest in the metaverse... Now's the time to do it. I mean, most of these metaverse coins are over, down over 90%. And you got to, if you're in the metaverse, you have to have some theta. There's no question about it. I mean, you're crazy if you don't. Okay, Binance. You know, Binance was approved to offer crypto services to Swedish customers. <clears throat> I actually thought, you know, <laughs> I always thought they were always available in Sweden. Um, but this is good news. You know, Binance is growing by leaps and down bounds. Of course, this is Binance International, not Binance.us. The decision from Sweden Financial Authority followed regulators in France, Barra, Spain, and Dubai granting similar approval. Okay, so I didn't know that. I thought, see, I thought Binance was always available in like Dubai because they're very crypto friendly. Anyway, so Binance is just growing and growing and growing and growing. Binance International. I mean, eventually they're just going to be like, <laughs> they're just going to buy everything up. I think Binance International is eventually just going to like buy everything up. Um, even Binance.us just got approval to buy Voyager, which is pretty cool. Well, actually, it's not pretty cool because I really don't want Binance owning everything. But, I mean, Binance has proven to be a trusted exchange, and Binance.us even more trusted. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah, I mean, in these bear markets, you want to see projects, you want to see exchanges that are growing, right? That's what you want to see, and you're seeing that with Binance. Uh, interesting story here. Yeah, so it's funny. So Binance, our Coinbase came out yesterday, and they basically said they were uh, firing 20% of their workforce. Um, it actually pumped the stock because they probably hired way too many people last year. But the following day, today, uh, Binance comes out, and they say, oh, well, we plan to hire 30% um, more. We're going to go on a hiring spree in 2023, uh, even as rivals uh, slash jobs. That's great. Obviously, a power move by CZ. I think it's almost kind of sleazy in a way because uh, Coinbase is a publicly traded company. So, you know, Coinbase when they say they're firing twenty, they're firing twenty percent of their people or they're hiring, they actually have to do it because they're making a promise to shareholders. Binance is not really publicly traded, so they can just come out and say, "Yeah, we're hiring thirty percent for this year." They can come out and say, "We're hiring hundred percent. We're hiring ninety percent." There's really no way to prove it with Binance. So that's why I don't put as much credence into what Binance says. 
I think it was just a power play by CZ or whoever's running Binance to basically be like, oh, you know, Coinbase is firing, we're hiring. Is that true? Are they really hiring? I'm sure they're always hiring. But are they really going to hire that many people? I doubt it. I doubt it. And like I said, there's no way to prove it. That's why I like Coinbase. That's why I'm an investor in Coinbase. They're a publicly traded company on the stock exchange. They have whatever they say. If they lie, they can go to jail or they can be held accountable. Binance can say whatever they want. Binance can come out and say, we discovered a cure for cancer. Just you buy some Bitcoin. I mean, you can't do it. It's Binance. I, be, I, I believe Binance International is like based off out of the seashells, some island somewhere. So are they really going to hire that many people this year? Maybe, maybe not. I'd say they're just basically fucking with Coinbase. But still kind of a funny story. All right. This is kind of fascinating. Um, I don't know. This whole... This whole FTX saga. So FTX, they've recovered over $5 billion in cash and liquid crypto. And this is only just the start. So previous reports suggested that FTX saw loss, losses peak at nearly $9 billion. Okay, so basically FTX was $9 billion in a hole. Where all the money go? I don't know. They were taking customer funds, invested in shitty projects, trading with it, blah, blah, blah. We know the story. We know Sam Bankman fried is out on bail right now on house arrest, blah, blah, blah. But the question was, are all these people on, on FTX International, FTX US, are they getting any of their money back? And the common consensus was no. I mean, that, that money is all gone, but they've already recovered $5 billion. Now, it might not be for a couple years, but say when this thing's all said and done, they recovered 7 or $8 billion. Or say it's just $5 billion. Well, if you had $100,000 on FTX, maybe you'll get $50,000 back. If they come up with seven or eight billion, you'll get eighty, ninety thousand dollars back. I mean, they're really coming up with this money. And as we go into a bull market, a lot of these, a lot of this money that's lost might be held up in these coins that actually skyrocket, gone into the bull market. So there is hope for FTX, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm actually shocked they found out that much. So according to FTX attorney Andy Diedrich. The troubled uh, cryptocurrency exchange has recovered $5 billion in cash and liquid crypt cryptocurrencies. However, the exchange is still working to rebuild transaction history, <clears throat> and the total amount of customer shortfalls is still unclear. The recovered assets do not include those seized by the Securities Commission. So that doesn't even include what um, the Bahamas seized. So... What I don't get by this story is, I mean, is it possible that they're going to recover everything? If so, then what was the problem? Like, I don't know. This whole thing's very confusing. Uh, speaking to a U.S. bankruptcy judge in Delaware, January 11th, uh, Diedrich also stated that the company plans to sell $4.6 billion worth of non-strategic investments, including subsidiaries such as Ledger, FTX Japan, FTX Europe. The companies are independent of FTX. Which, which segregated accounts. FTX Japan, Japan has already drafted plans to return customer funds. Hmm. In addition, FTX will end its 2021-2028 sponsorship deal with popular multiplayer online battle arena game League of Legends. All right. Well, that'll save them some money. Cointelegraph previously reported that FTX had $8.8 .8 billion in total liabilities. At the time, sources said the exchange had very little cash and liquid, a liquid digital assets, amounting to an estimated $8 billion hole in its balance sheet. At the January 11th hearing, FTX received court approval to keep customers' names secret for three months after customers raised potential identity concerns. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. This is just a weird story. Um, but look, if you had money on FTX International, this is good news. Now, a lot of people say, oh, FTX.us, you know, you lost all your money, blah, blah, blah. I actually, you know, I have no, I don't know for sure. But I think people who have their money on FTX.us, since that was a regulated exchange, and I feel like they were limited. And also Sam Bakeman fried even came out and he said, look, I believe that FTX.us, all the money is in there. But I think FTX.us got shut down with everything else. Everything got halted. But... If I had to bet, if I'm, I am a betting man, I would pretty much, I would say people on FTX.us will get their money back. I could be wrong. You might not get anything back, but my gut tells me that once all this gets sorted out, 
in the, in the coming years, which unfortunately it probably will take a coming years and your money is stuck there. So you might lose money just by not being in the sell in the bull market. You can't, you can't cash out, blah, 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 blah. But I just don't see people losing their money on FTX.us if they've already come up with 5 billion on FTX International. Could be wrong, but um, we'll see where that goes. But that's a fascinating story. Yeah, former, FT, former FTX US boss Brett Harrison vows to spill the dirt on the crypto disaster in the coming months. Okay, so well, this, this guy was in charge of FTX.us. He quit before it uh, imploded. I'm sure he knows if everybody's going to get their money back on FTX.us, uh, but you know, we'll see. Wait, we'll, we'll, wait, we'll wait for more from this guy. He says, what did you know about FTX, FTX official US? And when did you know it? I'll share in time. So... I don't know. We'll have to give it a f another few months to figure it out. Anyway, crypto market, okay, Bitcoin pushing that $17,500 again. Everything is looking pretty good this week. I mean, the question is, everybody wants to know, Do we want to? Re are we going to be bullish right now? Is this it? Are we going into a bull market? I mean, I don't think so. I really don't. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Cardano's right back down to 25 cents next week. I really wouldn't. I will also wouldn't be surprised if Cardano's at 40 cents. Like, I'm not going to pretend to know, but I think if Cardano does go back up to 40 cents, I think we'll probably get a, back, a dump back down to 25 cents before we go bullish again. Uh, I just think it's too early. There's too much uncertainty. We're too early on in 2023. We still got another year to the halvening. And statistically... Uh, Bitcoin does drop, you know, 80% in these bear markets. So, but, you know, like Gareth Soloway said, it's not uncommon to see some bullish activity in a bear market. This is getting people excited. Like I've been saying in my previous videos, it doesn't matter. Bitcoin goes down to 12,000, Cardano goes down to 15 cents. This, these last couple days should show you that no matter what happens, when we pump, we pump. And when we go into a bull market, it's not going to be Cardano goes from 25 cents to 33 cents. It's going to be Cardano goes from 25 cents to 33 cents, then the 40 cents, 50 cents, a dollar. I mean, it goes, it's, it's, it happens so fast. So that's why you have to have money on the side and you have to be buying these dips. But, you know, I just don't trust this pump. It's good to see. I enjoy it. Um, I think $18,000. I would be shocked if Bitcoin holds above $18,000. I would absolutely be shocked. I hope it does. I really do. But I don't think that's going to happen for another few months. All right, folks. Thank you for the new subscribers. I'm almost at 500 subscribers. So that's really, really cool. You know, I never thought I'd even get like 200 subscribers. So yeah, help me help push me over to that 500 mark. I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, like and subscribe and I'll talk to you later.